Okay, so thanks for deciding to come back. <laughs> uh, hope you had a good lunch. One thing I forgot to mention on my previous uh, uh, sessions is uh, tomorrow there will be a really great talk on atomic design and how to address accessibility when it comes to building components. Uh, it's going to be done by Rain Michaels. She is just an amazing speaker and she knows a lot about this stuff. So if you are going to be here tomorrow, I would highly recommend that um, talk uh, because uh, she will touch on a lot of the things that we are actually doing today when it comes to building components. So um, we encourage you to attend that if you're going to be here. <coughs> are there any questions on where we left off? Uh, we, the last thing we did is we build the card by combining previously made components and we kind of showed how you know being able to reuse those components can really be a huge advantage to scaling your project right so um so here is uh, in the case of the tags for the card that you see at the bottom of the tag we just have we go we loop through a an array and then we just print a list item for each of the uh, tags that we find and and that's how we ended up with uh, printing as many tags as are available on our data file. Are there any questions about this before we jump into, now that we have the card build, now let's build a listing of cards um, so that we can kind of see a more, um, a better build. In this case, it will be an organism, which will be like a section of a, web, a website. Uh, this will be something you would typically see uh, let's say you want to list um, latest news, right, or future news articles type of thing. Um, it will be something where you, we will use the card that we build to to um, to show something like this. This the spacing here is bad because the the resolution of this um, projector is very low, so I don't have. I, is like 800 by 600 almost <laughs> feels like I'm working back in the 2000s uh, so but technically there should be some space here in between each of those cards and as we talked before we build one individual card and we're just repeating it uh, we are changing content as as needed if we need to for example if you look at the titles are different for each card the tags are different for each card so we are reusing the components we build, but we are not um, boxed into static components, right? We're able to change uh, what those components offer. Uh, here, this is the exact same card, except we have updated a few things. One is the image aspect ratio is different. The layout of the card is different. The title is much bigger than other cards. Uh, so we're going to go over how this was done so that you can see that by that simple little card that we built earlier we can really build this whole section and all we've done is just build that one card um, and if this was not done via components you will be looking at having to build each of those things individually somehow uh, and even if you did find an efficient way of doing that chances of being able to reuse that elsewhere I, it will be very complicated to do if the components was not in the picture. So before we get into building this section here, um, are there any questions uh, about anything that we've covered today or just something that pops in your head that you're curious about or... Yes? So could you show your card YAML file again? Sure. I'll show my card YAML file. And so, so that's what this looks like here. You notice the image uh, there, the, this, the source for the image. I'm just using this uh, place image.com. It's a great service that you can use, especially when you're prototyping things like this, you know, rather than having to download images from the web and saving them somewhere and that kind of stuff. This just uh, grabs them and you can apply different parameters like 
the dimension, how big you want the image, and what type of image you want. So that's pretty nice. There's another service called uh, Pixum, P-I-C-S-U-M dot com. Same, same concept. Uh, you can apply all kinds of you know, parameters to it, uh, whether you want to be a, a list of images or um, different filters that you can apply to the image, whether it's sepia or overlay, um, that kind of thing. So it's a nice way to not having to deal with the stuff you know, local on your computer. Uh, the only disadvantage will be is if you, the Wi-Fi is down, then those, picture, those images will not render. <laughs> so just something to keep in mind. Uh, but it's get great for prototyping. So if we're doing demos or if we are building components for a client, um, you know, we just use things like this so that uh, um, images are automatically selected there. Was, yes? Is there a way to debug, like let's say I'm in my for loop for tags, is, is there a way to use any kind of debugging with this? If you had X, X debug uh, turned on, I think you may be able to do like, uh, you know, break, I add break points and things like that. Yeah. Um, you may be able to do it uh, maybe on the inspector, maybe also on the browser inspector. That may be another option there. Um, so here's the card again, as we saw before. So since we're going to be building a list of cards, we can technically use this card YAML file for all of them, except, you know, every card will look the same. And if you saw earlier, not all the cards look the same. The content is different. The titles are different. So what I did uh, to accomplish that, um, let me go here. I went back to my data file for that part. And what I did, um, the data file already came with a, um, let me see here. This file already came with this uh, object of latest posts. It was just empty, just like this here. And what I did is I plug in our data structure that, and I repeat it four times for four cards, right? So all I did is grab the data from our card YAML, and I repeated this. The format is different because this is from going from YAML to JSON. The format of the code is different, but it's still the same concept. We, I created an object for card, and each of the fields are there. And, and then just repeated the object four times. Uh, and this is where I was able to change the title, the length of the title, the tags, uh, anything I want. The picture even, I can choose to uh, render different images based on maybe the category. I chose the different categories for pictures so that we get different images on, on the cards. They don't, we don't get the same image. So, um, so this is where the data was put together for the card. Again, it's simply the same thing as what we did for the card, except we repeated it four times here. Um, and so th that goes for the data. Then um, we are done with atoms, right? We are done with molecules. The next uh, level is organism. So again, organisms are more like a section of a, of, a, of a page. It could be your hero. It could be your footer, your header, that will be an organism, which is a combination of molecules. And under organisms, there were already a few things that came with Pattern Lab. Uh, I looked into the sections um, category, and there was already a latest post organism, which is what I ended up reusing for the cards, except I changed the whole markup for it. But I just used that. Uh, since it's what we want to display anyways, it's latest post. So, so let's take a look at the latest post tweak template and go work our way down so we can kind of see how this list of cards was built. Now, if you look at the cards, all right, so we have this here. So we know we have four cards, right? Three of those cards are laid out exactly the same way, and one of them is completely different than the others. Um, maybe before we build this list, let's take a look, a closer look of how this card was built to look different than the others. Um, 
does anybody have any ideas on, on how this could be done without having to build a new card component? Modifier. Yes, a modifier class, was, which we've been using already, right? We added one for the eyebrow, we added one for the heading. We just added a secondary class to, to the default class that those components have. And so by using modifier classes, we can actually change things around, whether it is the way something looks or even the way something behaves, because you can use a class with JavaScript to make something do something right on, on your page. So let's, we'll, we'll take a look how this, this card itself was, was turned into what it is now. However, a modifier class along is not always uh, going to get you where you want to go. And this is when I go back to what I mentioned before is if your HTML structure is not correct, then you're going to have a hard time manipulating things when you're trying to change the way things are laid out or look. Uh, the example that I give before is because I'm wrapping things into individual containers or, or grouping things into containers, it is much easier to move a bunch of things at once rather than individual fields. And let's take a look at the code here first, and then we'll, we'll look at what CSS was, um, was needed to, to make this happen. So if you look at the card, we have the class of card, and then everything else is the same. There's no different in the markup. It's the exact same markup. But what I mentioned before is we have this container for the media or image. I, I, I use media because sometimes some cars may have videos, right? You know, in some cases, you may want to display a video instead of an image. So media is more appropriate. And then the content is where you have all those fields for the card, the tag, the teaser, and everything else. So this is your, your typical card. If I inspect any of the cards down here, it's going to be exactly the same as, as this one. The exception on this one is that I added this other class, card wide. right? And that's the only class I need in order to make the change. So uh, how do we do that? Well, if I go to the card, we have our default class of card, but we also have this logic here that if there is a modifier pass, we, uh, we add that as a, as a class. And in the YAML, the modifier for this one was left empty for the individual card so that we only get the card class. If we look at our data for the card collection, um, which starts here, the latest post. Here's the first card object. You see that this first card on the array, so this will be an array of cards. So this first card on the array has a value for the modifier key, which is card wide. And the other ones do not. So here's another item. The modifier is empty. And same for this one here, and the last one here. So what this is saying is only for the first card, pass this class to the first card, because that's the only one where I want that class. And now, if I go to CSS, and I have the card CSS, so here are all the styles for the card. We don't have to go into details, because this will be, a, I will make this code available, by the way. Um, I'll upload it so you, you can have access to it. And if you want to take a look a little bit closer to it, that's something you can look into. Um, so here's our style for our card, card image, the title. Notice um, what I mentioned before is by using BAM and by using the proper markup, look at how the CSS, there's really, there's practically no nesting here whatsoever. Everything is flat. Um, and this not only is more efficient, right, um, from a performance point of view. But also, it's a lot easier if you want to change things. Uh, this card shows this way here, but on another page, I wanted to show something else. It's really easy to override those without having to go through a 
a series of selectors to get to where the one you want to get to, or or by using important, which is something that you should not use, uh, but, you know, just as a best practices. But yeah, the styles because of BAM and the structure that we have in place for markup becomes very simple and very easy to read and understand really what's happening, especially when you have comments um, that tell you what each section is. So, so let's take a look how the card was changed. By default, um, if I go to, so this is all the single card. Here is where the styles for the wide card start which is the horizontal version of the card. And because only that card will have that class, right? The first thing I'm doing is I'm displaying the main wrapper of the card as flex. And so I'm using flex box here. By default, flex uses the direction of row. In this case, I am declaring it explicitly. It's not necessary, but I'm doing it just in case. And so what that's going to do is it's going to, and I'm applying, I'm applying that to the, to the main wrapper of the card. So here. And what that does, because I'm using display flex, any shells inside the card, which will be flex items, which will be the card media and the card content, what that's going to do, those are automatically going to float next to each other. Just like that. There's, that's it. Uh, if you did this with float, which is the old way of doing it, it will take a little bit more code, but it's the same concept. So just by using display flex, things just automatically switch next to each other. Uh, because the default display direction of Flexbox is row, which will make things line up in a row. If I want to change that on mobile so that my card is a stack instead, I would just use display flex, but with the direction of column, so things get stuck back top and bottom again. Or just not use flex at all, because by default, things will stack anyway. Right? So that's something to keep in mind. So as simple as just using display flex pretty much gets me almost there of what I want, as far as moving the image to the left and the text to the right. Um, so, so that's how I was able to, to get this. Uh, because right now here, the text is at the bottom, the image is on top, but just by doing flex, it's moved to the, to the right of the image, the text. And because everything is inside that one container, everything inside that container moves with it. And that's how things just end up this way here. The other thing that I did different on this card is we're still passing the image field, except the image dimensions are different. And this is typical in Drupal, right? If you want to do something like this in Drupal, all you have to do is apply a different image style to the image, right? And say, for example, this one almost looks almost square. It's not quite square, but let's say it's square. So you use an image style that is square. And for this, will be an image style that is 16 by 9, for example. But it's still the same image feel. You may just have different view modes in which you want to display that content in Drupal. And each view mode could use different image style. Um, back to the CSS. So flex grow. Um, flex grow, I set it to zero. The reason, uh, when you do flex grow, the default is one. And that means anything will grow. Um, and what I didn't want is for my image to grow uh, more than I really want it. I wanted to limit it at 750 pixels. Um, by having the flex grow set to zero, uh, this dimension will be respected. If, I, if this was changed to one, the car will continue to grow horizontally, and, and I didn't want that. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. And the margin, obviously, that just makes sure that the car is always centered in the page. That's what the margin zero auto does. Now, for the card, for the image in the card wide, um, this is just a setting a maximum width for the image so that it displays the width that we want it. And then the, the other container, the content, where all the other fields are, I'm also specifying a width there. Now, in this case, I usually don't like to assign dimensions like this to, to the things that I build because it seems 
too static to me. But because I'm not using SAS, otherwise I could use some SAS logic calculation of saying, uh, you know, 300 pixels for the image, that's okay. But for the right side content, I want it to be 100% minus 356 pixels. So, and it will still be a percentage uh, width rather than a fixed pixel width. Uh, again, I, I only did this because I'm not using SAS. Um, and so, so that's what, um, that, that's how I was able to, to get that. Um, and finally, for the car wide, I'm changing the font size to be bigger than the other cards, the title for, for the card. Um, but so if you notice, literally it's just a handful of changes. Uh, these changes, um, very minimum ch with very minimum changes, we were able to achieve that horizontal look of the card in, in, in part because the markup that we wrote for the card lends itself to naturally behave the way you want it. We're not forcing anything into place. We're simply saying, hey, float these two things next to each other, and then just make this 300, this one 450, and, and increase the size of the, of the title to 34 pixels. That's all we're doing. Um, we're not s forcing things into saying, hey, make sure that this is sitting right here and this is sitting right here. We're not doing any of that. We're just letting flex just naturally determine how to float things. Um, and, and, and that's how we're able to achieve this here. Now, there is a trick. Um, if you look at the tags, they're at the bottom on all the cards, regardless of how much content is in that card. Now, the beauty of Flexbox, as we've done here, is that no matter how much content each card has, they will always be the same height, the cards. So, for example, this teaser text has one more line than that one, I think. Two, four, five, two, maybe the same, is it? Oh, no, the, okay, so the title has three lines here, uh, two lines there. Actually, on, on my computer, this will look like one line. But regardless of how much content is here, the cards will always be the same height. And if you notice that the tags are always at the bottom. Now, there's many ways in which you can achieve that. Uh, the old way, I would be thinking about using absolute position for that, right? I could say, always show the tags 30 pixels from the bottom of the card. That could work, but as I said before, I'm not a big fan of putting, forcing things into place. I want things to naturally fall in place. And that is huge when it comes to responsive design because the user experience is much better when you let things naturally flow into place. When you're putting things uh, and forcing them into place, that transition from mobile to the tablet and desktop becomes a little wonky. It, 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 you see things that don't look natural when you're switching from one uh, breakpoint to another. So to achieve this, there's a trick uh, on with, with, that has to do with Flexbox. Because I am using Flexbox on, on the card, um, the um, let me go to the card so I can show you where that was okay here we go you notice that I'm using Flexbox here for the card so they can line up next to uh, the text and the image to line next to each other but on the content of the card here, and I think, yeah, right there, actually. On the content of the card, I'm changing the flex direction to column. Um, so what that does, it allows me for, for things to, uh, to uh, on here to stack, even here, because there's a lot, a lot more space here. It allows for, I don't need to do the Flexbox here, but I am doing it and changing it to column. So that means things will stack one on top of the other. By doing that, the last element 
that I have on that list of uh, content, the last element will be the tags. And by simply using margin top auto, I'm able to automatically push those tags to the bottom and they will always be at the bottom regardless. This thing is not. This screen is killing me. Here we go. Um, so all I did, because I'm using Flexbox here, the, the last element, um, which is the tags, you can see that the margin top, which is the very first value, is set to auto. And that automatically pushes those tags to the very bottom uh, of whatever is available, whatever space is available there. So if I was to remove this margin, I can even edit this. Not letting me. It's weird. Oh, maybe I can to do here. You can't really see here, but I have very li very little space here to work with, so um, it's not good. But anyways, if I was to remove the auto from from here, the tags will be moved up because naturally that's where they belong. Wow, this is okay. Element. Yeah, I, I CSS. so weird that I can't uh, modify this, but uh, I'm sorry. Yes, the uh, elements, that's where it should be. That's weird, because um, I'm not seeing all the, it's weird. I, I normally don't, because uh, this looks really huge in here, that's why I can't, re but, um, but yeah, so that's a trick. In fact, I wrote a little tip, pro tip uh, blog post on our website about that, the margin auto um, uh, tip, which uh, is great because let's say you have a navigation, like a main navigation, and you have your you know, about home, about us, you know, contact us, blog, whatever, and then you want a link here for log out or log in, you can set a flex box on those, right? And then for this one link, for this item, you can say margin left auto, and it'll automatically push all the way to the end. So that's a nice trick um, that allows you, to, it saves you a lot of um, uh, code, and also is a more natural way of, for that link to behave that way. So, so that's kind of what, what that looks like there, as I was able to, to, um, to move that there. Um, Okay, so now let's go on how we actually build the collection of cards. So let's go back to latest post. Wrong place. So the first thing I am doing is, if we look at our card collection, we have this heading, latest posts. Now I could, I could have added that to the data file that we created, the, the JSON data. But normally this will be a, a title that is not gonna change. So what I did is I am um, first checking to see if there is a title and then I am including the title component that we built this morning. And I'm passing those hard coding values. In this case, I'm, I'm okay with passing these values here. So I'm passing a, a heading level of two, this new class, and the, the label of latest posts. And no URL value, that means that this 
uh, title here is not going to be a link. And the, re the way I achieved the look of that, because it's still a heading element, so technically it should look like any other heading on the page, but that one I wanted it to look different. So what I did for that one is I, I passed this class of latest post heading. And that class allows me to change the type of font, the thickness of the font, the size of the font, so that I don't affect all the headings on the page. So that's the first thing we did. The next, I created a, a listing. So the listing will be the entire list of cards, the four cards. Okay. Um, and then I started from there. So the four cards first. But then I said, okay, now the first card needs special attention, right? That one is completely different than the other ones. So I created a special wrapper for that one. And I call that uh, latest post listing featured because that's the featured card, the featured post. And here's where we start with our uh, looping through our array of cards. Now, typically you would do a one loop, you know, through this array, and then you print things right the way we did with the tags, one loop, and that was it. Now, in this case, I needed to do two loops. Um, because not only the cards don't show up in sequence, at least the first and the remaining three, they don't show up in sequence. There is extra things happening between them. Uh, but also, I needed to capture the first card first so that I can do something with it. So the first thing I did is I looked through the entire array of latest posts, and I said, if, if the item is the first, that's what, what this translates to, if the item in the loop is the first one, I want to use the card component that we built and map those fields, right? And then close the end if and claim the, the loop. Now, so what I am doing here is I'm including the card component and I'm mapping those fields, right? This is what I was talking about before that rather than mapping each individual field by using the object, I'm just saying match, uh, map the card object in the card component with the item, which is item the card component of the first one here. Now, everything else is being handled by the data, meaning that because the first item on my array already has that special class of card wide, that will come with this card because I'm mapping directly to that one, right? And then I end that loop. And then I close the wrapper for, for this here, for the future card. I'm done with that one. OK, now I want to print the remaining three cards. And we can go over this in as, 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 uh, um, response to questions uh, in a little bit. But I want to first show you this. So now I'm done with the first card. Now we're going to print the remaining three cards. For that, because they're in sequence, and it's a list of cards, I can print them as an unordered list, right? And I'm saying latest post list. And I do another loop, okay? I say for item in latest post, again, if the item is not the first one, then print a list item for each of the cards after you include the card component again. So it's gonna go through the array and it's going to ignore the first one, and it's just going to print a card for each of the remaining cards in that array. And again, I'm just mapping this as objects rather than individual fields. Um, and then closing the end if, the for loop. And finally, uh, the button. Uh, I don't think we show how to build a button, but it's pretty straightforward. and just showing that button here. Um, any questions on this? Um, I just wanted to first go through it, um, and then we can we can step through it together if you have any questions about any of these items, because um, the loops is what sometimes can complicate things a little bit if if you're not uh, well f familiar with the loops. I have a yes. Well, tell me what the only does again. 
uh, only uh, ensure, and, and, and in some cases like this, it may not be, but when you're, um, you, it only allows you to kind of sometimes limit the fields that you want to pass when you're including a component. So you know how the card has an image, a title, date, text, and tags component. Let's say I, for this card, for this section here, I don't want the text field to come through or the tags. I can just indicate those fields, say with those fields only, and it's not going to error or complain that it's, that it's missing some fields. It's because I'm saying, no, I just want just a few of the fields, not all of them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's say you just wanted, like, without an image, you could list individually and then just do only, and it would. Yeah. yeah. Because if you list the fields individually and you don't okay. specify with only, and you miss a field, it's going to complain. It's going to say, wait a minute, there's a field missing. Why is it not being passed? So this, in a way, tells you, yeah, no, I don't want all the fields, just want this one. And um, any questions about that? I have a question, maybe, but maybe it's too ahead of the question. So after we did this, right, how do we, Maybe it's, I don't know, again, maybe tell me if it's a, not the right the question to ask. How do we take this and transfer it into the theme? Ooh, that's a good question. Everybody's looking at like, yeah, how do you do that? Well, for that, you need to go to bad camp next month. Okay. Yeah. I do an all-day uh, workshop on how to do exactly that. Uh, however, you guys are in luck. Cause I can share the curriculum with you. It's online. And it's got all the exercises. A lot of the exercises is basically what we just did. But the last chapter of the curriculum is how to move this and integrate it with Drupal so that the components print Drupal data. So I will uh, share that with you. Just don't tell, don't tell anybody. Kind of like the JSON data will be replaced with the Drupal data, but it's like how do you kind of... Yeah, so let me, let me uh, give you an example how that will be done. So the question is how do you then transfer these components so that you can use them in Drupal. That's kind of the bottom line of question. So whether you are using a content type, uh, uh, as a media current, we like to use paragraph types for building entities, building contents, and be able to place them anywhere on our site, right? So the way I see it, so if you think of the card, we build a paragraph type for the card with the same fields, an image, title, text, tags, right? And then we create a tweak template for the paragraph type. Let's say the, 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 the paragraph type is called card. <laughs> Wait, what do you know? Card. And so then we create a tweak template for that. It will be paragraph dash dash card dot HTML dot tweak, right? That's the Drupal tweak template for the paragraph type, for the card paragraph type. And then what we do is, uh, if we're using a view mode, or if, uh, you can use uh, Kint, the paragraph will eventually go into a node, right? You, you can't print a, something directly in a paragraph. It has to be, the paragraph has to be placed somewhere in Drupal. Paragraph on its own does nothing. So I put it on a node, like a content type, for example. So, and then with Kint, I can inspect the variables from the paragraph type, although since I built the paragraph type, I already know what the field names are. It will be something like uh, card image, card title, card teaser, you know. So when I do, I do this on, pretend this is the paragraph template here. Okay. And then I do this, ignore the loop though, but I would do the include and say, give me the card. And then the card has its fields. So it'll be card um, image, right? So the card image will be mapped to Drupal's card image field. Yeah. The card title will be mapped to Drupal's card title field, and so on for each field. And then when you add content in Drupal for that paragraph, then your component will look exactly the same in Drupal, but now it will be with Drupal data. That's obviously a very simplified yeah. way. But, uh, but that's the, the, the main idea is that 
for every component that you have on your library, you will be building some kind of Drupal entity for that so that you can map the two, the fields. And, and, and that's how you will get to, um, to do that. But yeah, I do a workshop at Drupal Camp. It's coming up. And, but I'll, I'll share the, um, we have a whole book uh, that we follow through the training. Um, and so you can, you can go through the exercises because it's exactly kind of what we've done here. The reason I did this today is because people who are going to that workshop or who have gone to that workshop in the past, they always ask, how did you arrive to these components? How did you decide that this will be the components you wanted to build? And, and why did you decide on doing it this way? This, you know, so this class, in a way, is the prequel. Is Here are the things to take under consideration while building components. Here's how you should name components. Here's the markup. This is what the markup should look like. This is how your styles should look like. Because the other workshop focuses on uh, building components that we already decided will be built and then integrate them with Drupal. So it's a more intermediate advanced course than this one. And another question, do you find a huge difference between SAS and CSS? Because, I mean, working with SAS, is there's a learning curve and like uh, for the language itself, the, 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 the texting and with CSS is still a little bit more clear. Is there like a huge difference in the performance or? It's not so much performance because ultimately your website will still, will still render CSS. Um, but it, it, you become more efficient because you can do a lot of things that you can't do with plain CSS like variables, um, mixings, um, and things like that. So this is the first time I used CSS in, in years, I think just plain CSS. And, you know, I, I, was, I had already written this right you know, before this class, but I, a couple of times I had to remember that I wasn't writing SAS. And, and so, like the nesting, I, I kept nesting things, uh, and I remember that, that that's only a SAS thing. Um, but as you saw, I mean, the CSS looks clean, and yeah. there was no need for any, anything to elaborate, right? It was pretty f straightforward, very simple, very vanilla. Um, and that's, that's the one thing is, you know, um, only write the code you need. Uh, I, I've, I've seen people who start writing all this code, whether CSS or HTML, that makes no sense. It's just adding. Uh, sometimes they just may not understand what CSS is doing, and, and they just throw in whatever they think of. Um, but I try to, you know, let the system kind of behave naturally the way it does, and then just add what I need. Um, it be, your code becomes lighter and, and easier to maintain. That's the main thing is if you look at this code, you know, a year from now, will, will you be able to maintain it? You know, uh, I've seen projects where it's, it's, it's a pain to maintain, where there's over engineering of the code that it just becomes a problem. So. Um, and one question is scale up. If you want more cards, hundreds and thousands of cards, you just add it to your data file and it just um, expands and as large as the yeah. data is. Oh, you don't even have to do that. Literally, I could have just used the single card data file that I had. Um, this one here, this card that I built, I could have just used this single card data and just repeated it 100 or 1,000 times. The only thing is that each card would have looked exactly the same with the same content. But for, from, for a visual representation, it's not a problem, really, right? You're just trying to show your stakeholders, hey, here's what 100 cars will look like, you know? Obviously, the content ultimately will be different, but for now, it's using, all the cars are using the same. I just wanted to show a little bit uh, more realistic look of what a, a listing of cards will look with different content, different things. Um, but yeah, so uh, as far as scale, it's just, yeah, there's no limit on how many times you can use it, and you just build it once, really, which is great. Uh, so we build pages like this. Um, you know, this listing of cards, it could go on forever. You know, you can say, show me 50 results first, and then there's a lot more, and it, they'll just continue to load more cards, more cards. So any, any other question? Um, I think we have, let me, Push this code up so if you need to grab it and, and, and take a look at it a little more closely, you can. 
And also I'm going to redirect you to the training curriculum that I was talking about, Batcamp. The training is broken down in three parts. One is, first is building the components, which is similar to what we just did. The second part is building Drupal's back end, where we build um, content types, and we build um, paragraph types, views, image styles. And the third part is marrying Drupal with your components. So you see Drupal printing all the content using your components. The second part, building Drupal backend, uh, because on the, on the project, we provide you with a full development environment with Lando. So all of that is already done for you if you want to import the database that comes in the repo. So you don't have to build the Drupal part of, of the project. We, we include the instructions for you if you want to do it uh, in case somebody wants to do it on their own later on. But you don't have to do that part because everything is already included in the database, the content and everything else. And so you just focus on building the components and then integrating them with Drupal. Um, so let me share that with you real quick. First, um, this project here, I'm going to stop this. I hope I didn't break anything here, but I'm going to um, I'm going to. So, um, it's probably going to include things that you don't need, but uh, for now, I'm just going to add all this. Maybe I shouldn't have done that because it's including. Um, I'll, I'll clean this up in a minute. Okay, so uh, what I'm going, actually I'm not using, uh, oh, this one here, I don't need this. Let me remove this, that's huge there. Okay, and that's gonna save a lot of space. So, Okay, so there is, there's no readme. I'll add a readme later on. But um, so the repo is if you go to github.com slash Mario Hernandez, and then you can find the building and styling components repo there. Now, let me share with you the other one. This is the curriculum for the training that I was mentioning before. So it goes through some basics of best practices. Look. Uh, and this is what we build in the class, actually, this here. This, um, it's like, um, uh, it's, uh, instead of Netflix, it's Netflix. Um, just, um, so we, uh, we, this is what we build in class. We build individual components, then we build a card like that, then we create listings of cards by categories and things like that, and a big feature card uh, movie. And so here is where uh, the first ch chapter four is where you build the components. Chapter five is what I said before, Drupal backend. 
Um, but that's already done uh, for you in the database that we include here. And then integrate the components, which is the question that he asked, how do you put this in Drupal? So this is the curriculum. Um, if you want if you go to my GitHub page, you will see this uh, you will see this um, here in uh, let me see is component based development is the one that you want for for the right here. And this is again, um, if you want to just grab the code, that's fine. But here are all the steps on how to get your entire environment up and running with Lando. So you have everything built for you, uh, including Drupal installation with the database, everything, Lando and the whole nine yard. The entire thing that we use during training, the reason for that is uh, it's easier to work with this system that is already in place and test it so that people don't run into issues during training and we can just focus on the training itself. Uh, so yeah, all of this will give you the what you need. And and then at the end, you will see where it says follow the exercises here. And that's where it takes you to the book. And that's the whole thing. So so what we just did today uh, here is kind of the prequel to this training here. So whatever we did today, we continue on, on here. And at the end, you should have a pretty good understanding of how to not only plan for components, build them, but also integrate them with Drupal. So you have the whole process in place. Um, so. I think um, that will do. Are there any questions? Um, and again, tomorrow, that talk by Rain Michaels, uh, highly recommended if you can make it to that. Uh, and I think it will really help you with having a better understanding of what we just uh, covered today here. So, are there any other questions I can answer for you? Well, if there are not more questions, then I appreciate you coming in and spending your most of your day here with us. And I hope that this was useful. You can always reach out to me. Uh, if you don't have my contact information, I have business cards here if you wanna take one. And um, I'll be happy to you know, answer any questions. Um, I'm, I'm very actively on, on Twitter, so feel free to follow me and you know, always posting tips and tricks about this kind of stuff. So thank you again for your time. Enjoy the rest of the camp.